This story is about a dreamer who turned $500 into three gold albums and over two billion streams. Songwriter Hall of Famer and Grammy-nominated artist Jim Croce was one of America's most renowned songwriters in music history. Writing timeless classics such as Time in a Bottle and Bad Bad Leroy Brown, his unique storytelling captured the hearts of millions. However, Jim's road to fame was filled with many obstacles. If I could save time in a bottle The first thing that I'd like to Jim Croce, born James Joseph Croce, was born on January 10, 1943, in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. From an early age of five, Jim was drawn to music, learning his first song on the accordion and even teaching himself how to play the guitar. But it was not until he attended college in 1961 that he began taking music seriously. Jim attended Villanova University as a psychology major, where he became the lead singer for the campus singing group the Villanova Spires and formed bands off campus. These bands would take their talents to fraternity parties, coffee houses, and universities around Philadelphia. One of Croce's bands was even chosen for a foreign exchange tour of Africa, the Middle East, and Yugoslavia. After returning back to the States, Jim's motivation for music was at an all-time high. He continued playing with his band for the months to come, but soon realized how difficult it would be to make a living playing in a band. Jim is judging at a local hootenanny with his band, the Coventry Lads, when he meets a woman by the name of Ingrid Jacobson, who was singing with her high school singing band. Shortly after, Jim and Ingrid started dating and eventually married in 1966. As a wedding gift, Croce's parents gave the couple $500 attached with one condition. The money had to finance Croce's album. Although it seems as if it was given in good faith, Croce's parents anticipated this album would fail, making Jim realize how difficult it is to make it in the music business. They hoped this realization would make him give up his dreams of becoming a musician to pursue a professional career with his college degree. Croce later sold all 500 printed copies of this album all within a week. In 1968, Jim and Ingrid moved to New York after recording their joint album, Jim and Ingrid Croce, and pitched it to Capitol Records. Capitol Records picked it up, but did little to promote the album. The couple spent two years touring the city, performing at universities and local bars. The album had little commercial success, and after a deal to host a kid's show fell through, the couple was left disillusioned by the music business and broke. They decided to sell all of their belongings but one guitar and moved back to Pennsylvania in 1970, where Croce picked up various jobs to make ends meet, such as working in construction and driving trucks. He drew inspiration for some of his songs through the characters he would meet at work. He would work his job throughout the day, and at night, Jim and Ingrid would continue playing at local bars and coffee shops. Ingrid becomes pregnant, and Jim is motivated to pursue a career in music again. Within the first week of finding out his wife is pregnant, Jim wrote what would later become some of his biggest hits, Time in a Bottle, You Don't Mess Around with Jim, Operator, and more. After Jim sent his songs over to ABC Records, executives quickly saw the potential in his music, landing him a three-year contract. Jim's first commercial album was released in 1972, which landed two of the songs he sent to ABC Records. He would go on to release another album in 1973 of that same year. After a long year of touring, Jim had just finished his final concert in Natchitoches, Louisiana and was getting ready to return home to his family. In anticipation to return home, Jim requested to move up his flight out of Louisiana to the night before it was originally scheduled. Croce and five others boarded the plane before the aircraft crashed into a tree during takeoff, killing everyone on board. Although it's been 50 years since his passing, Croce's songwriting ability has a way of transcending time. From being inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, to his songs being featured in popular movies and shows to include Django Unchained, Stranger Things, and X-Men, Days of Futures Past, if I could save time in a bottle. Jim's dreamer legacy lives on. After learning more of Jim's story, it becomes easy for one to identify themselves with his tale, an ordinary man harboring an extraordinary dream. From humble beginnings, Croce's dedication and perseverance helped him rise and captivate audiences with his heartfelt melodies and relatable lyrics. Who would have thought $500 could get you so far?